everybody, it's the Mad Master here. I'm doing a video tonight, and this is about the recent accusations against Ramstein, or uh, the lead singer, uh, per, what is his name, Lindemann. And just as a aside, I'm not a really huge fan of Ramstein. I thought there's a couple of songs that I like okay, and there's just a couple of albums that aren't so bad, but um, I just think of them as kind of more of like a poppy or metallic Wybach, I guess, you know, in a certain way, but not, you know, that's neither here nor there with this video. So apparently this, this fan went backstage, was really drunk, got some weird bruise, made these weird accusations, but kind of didn't make an accusation of actually anything happening, like sexual, but that he got, the singer got mad that she wouldn't have sex with him and kind of stormed off or something like that and then there's these after parties that people get drunk and oh my god there's sometimes people have sex what a nightmare scenario so this is the situation here so i don't know i can't speak to if this like because there's supposedly other people coming forward but like it's unknown it's a little nebulous and a little bit vague at this point other than this person that kind of backtracked what they said. They just said they thought they were drugged backstage and then they did tests and they were, were there was no drugs. So it's like a little craziness going on. Um, other than that, we don't really know. Now, the media has done their part of muddying the waters in this situation, of course. And they have used the term that is so hot to use, the G word groom again and this really bothers me now there's been a tradition in rock and roll like it or not of roadies going out and saying you know oh, this girl looks like she'd like want to go backstage and you know sometimes they'd get a they'd get blown away you know what i mean by the said girl and then they'd go to get backstage and then this happens in Pink Floyd, The Wall. Speaking of controversy, I'm going to talk about that in a later video. So this whole situation has gotten out of hand. It's in Germany mainly right now. But like there's investigation and then Rammstein has, you know, actually done pretty well in the PR front and, and kind of saying that they're going to watch things and, you know, investigate themselves or whatever. I mean, I know that's controversial, but they're going to try to cooperate and stuff. So this is the whole thing. And I don't think that the singer actually quit the band right away. Like this sometimes happens in the situations. And it's really stupid, I think. Um, without like guilty, it's like guilty before proven innocent. It's innocent before proven guilty. Um, which is the whole Me Too thing, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm going to be called a denier and apologist and all this stuff. And oh, you're such a problematic guy. You're an incel. When's the last time you had sex? Oh, oh. You know, of course, people will say that kind of stuff, and I don't care. Whatever. Um, let them enjoy their uh, soylent green, you know, in the future, <laughs> so to speak. So, this is what I think about the situation. I think that this is a culture, you know, that these articles talking about, oh my God, it's so shocking. Women are invited backstage to have sex with the band. This is like... Rockstar 101. Like, do these not people not know about rock and roll? Like, what do they listen to? I mean, what are, what are they into? Like, isn't this been a part of the thing for like 50, 60 years? Like, I just read like Lita Ford's autobiography and she was kind of grossed out by poison doing this kind of thing. But it's like, it's just part and parcel in rock. I'm not saying it's right, but there's like some German minister, like, like, uh, you know, bureaucrat saying, we got to protect women at shows and have a woman's only section. I'm like, what the hell is, what, what happened, what happened to people? First of all, there seems to be like a prudish Victorian sensibility with some of these articles, how they're written and how these people are acting. And I'm not saying that assault is okay or anything like that. If someone was drugged, that's really messed up. If someone was actually drugged or, you know, just fed drinks to have sex with, I don't, I don't think that's right. Now, where do you draw the line when everybody's partying, like back in the 80s and 70s, 90s, probably now a lot of situations. Where do you draw the line? 
So I don't know. But this whole situation is so just obliquely stupid. And, you know, that some of the rhetoric and some of the what's going on is so dumb. It's just like, I just have to, it's like face palm, you know, times 10. I just don't know where to go with this. It's like, in my head, it's like, you know, let's say uh, everybody's proven innocent in this situation. Nobody, nobody ever, you know, canceled, you know, they, and they, they stand up to it. Like, you know, the guys in, uh, what was that band? Um, God, what is that metal band? Um, not, not deceased. God, not this member. It's a D word. Decapitated. I'm sorry. So, you know, those, those guys were accused of a lot of stuff. And then there was all these facts that came out that it was just bullshit, at least proven bullshit. Now, I know someone that believes anything an accuser says. That used to be my girlfriend, actually. But uh, she doesn't accuse me of anything, by the way, if you ever wanted to know. But she, you know, everybody, everybody else is, you know, guilty. Woody Allen and, you know, everybody, except for your midget boyfriend. But anyways, <laughs> ex-boyfriend, whatever. Um, <laughs> Anyways, I throw I throw it aside on that. So it's ridiculous. I mean, we've gotten so far. The pendulum's gone way too far, in my opinion. And this is how far we've gone. So there was a satanic panic in the 80s that involved a lot of like, accusations about cults and sexual abuse and sacrifice and Satan and all this stuff. That's why it was called the satanic panic. Heavy metal was implicated, Dungeons and Dragons and... You know, all these people that were just freaks or weirdos. I mean, granted, you probably had some, like, trailer uh, uh, inhabiting Slayer fans that probably burned a cat a couple of times and so, you know, drunkenly and while yelling Slayer and Satan and listening to, like, Hello Waits or whatever. I mean, sure, it happened. But as far as, like, this grand conspiracy cabal of uh, Satanists which I don't find that bad <laughs> in some ways. Um, it's just ridiculous. So it's just like, one of the things that came up though is repressed memories, which has been this kind of like very fringe idea in the psychological community. So UFOs and, uh, you know, with regards to like alien abduction and satanic cults and all this stuff. And the McMartin preschool trial and all this stuff. And people got cleared. People were never, like, just, like, there was a lot of people talking about backwards messages and stuff, too, like, with heavy metal. So a lot of this stuff was never proven as far as, like, repressed memories and stuff. But now, lo and behold, this is what changed my opinion about Marilyn Manson, by the way. But this is just a single thing. I don't care what else you say about Marilyn Manson. The fact that that Evan Rachel Wood is telling all these women you might have repressed memories um, is just proof, is part and parcel of this like pendulum swinging so hard. It's like woke, uh, it's like a woke satanic panic or something. It's just so bizarre. So with me too and stuff, and it's just like, dude, I'm sorry. Um, Van Halen did the same kind of thing recruited groupies to get backstage um countless bands did it for decades and now ramstein i mean it's like ramstein isn't the band that i would nest well they have some sexual kind of groove stuff you know but you know i mean pantera probably did this even metallica had their share of groupies backstage and i'm not saying like there weren't like I'm, I'm i'm sure most of them are willing participants that went backstage for a purpose of course but grooming girls to come backstage. Like there was some woman that picked out women from the audience that would come backstage. It's not like, the, I, I mean, I guess the expectation. If you're going back, how stupid can you be? Maybe you're a fan of the band. But if you're going to be, if you're like in a certain situation, blame the victim, of course. I'm blaming the victim. <laughs> so how stupid can you be? Like, for example, let's talk about Harvey Weinstein. If a guy's calling you to come to his hotel room at two in the morning to talk about some movie role, and then you open up the door and he's dressed in like a bathrobe, are you, are you going to go in there and say, 
it was all his fault. I mean, you're gonna say it's all, there's some culpability there. There's a, I mean, even if it's a little bit, even if it's a little bit in that situation, there has to be some culpability. But people are too stupid to, to have their own agency because this type of feminism that is being perpetuated strips everybody of accountability other than the evil male, you know, that's perpetuating their, their seed upon, their evil seed upon the world. Penis is evil. It's like from Zardo. It's one of my favorite movies, by the way. Watch it. Watch it, please. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just really ridiculous. Um, and I, I just, I just don't know where to go. <laughs> I find it so ludicrous. Like this, this woman that gave this fir first accusation that kind of just wasn't an accusation, really. It just was like, I was backstage. I thought I had been drugged, but I wasn't. I didn't have sex. And then they recruit girls to go backstage. Okay, well, I want some meat. No pun intended. I want some, like, actual, like, hear about some actual things that were bad. But are we that, like, screwed up that this is, like, the big deal? I mean, there are people like Lot the Lost Prophet Singer. It was an awful person. You know, there's people like that. There's Bill Cosby probably did most of the stuff he did. And, and Weinstein, too, did stuff. I mean... Weinstein is a complicated guy, of course, but, you know, I'm sure he did stuff. Epstein, you know, <laughs> even though there are, I would like to hear more audio clips of Epstein because there's hardly any out there, which is kind of creepy. Um, some of them are kind of entertaining, I'll just be honest. I'm not like a fan, but it's like listening to Charles Manson or Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, talking or something. It's just like, wow, this is interesting, you know. So in conclusion, this this whole thing just... It angers me, but it amuses me too. It's like, I mean, it depends on where this goes. If there is an actual concentrated effort to assault women backstage, then okay. But if, what what is your def? If are they defining assault as like grooming girls to have sex with a band? That's so stupid. And the, the even the more thing with this, I'm gonna say, Ramstein isn't exactly a young band. Um, I would say that probably, and I'm not going to say that they don't have young fans or young fans that go backstage or young fans that they have sex with, but I would say like you're at, you know, you're, you're talking about grooming women. Probably some of them have their prefrontal cortex fully developed. Oh my God. That's even more. Oh, it's, it's not as bad as a free, uh, like how Oh my God, it's just like, all this stuff is so stupid. And it's like, I want, you know, if something bad happened, justice should be done, obviously. But this, this, it's gone so crazy, you know? And, you know, of course, <laughs> being a fan, even though I just do laugh and I do think it's kind of, it gets, it gets a little cringe. Uh, um, Colonel Kurtz has videos about this already. Now, if she gets to the truth about what's going on, then that's, good like I think she did very well the depth thing and she was the one that changed my mind changed my mind about Marilyn Manson so she kind of it does seem like she automatically assumes Colonel Kurtz is this YouTuber that talks about a lot of crazy stuff I actually like her channel a lot um but yeah I mean it's just it's just so ludicrous that people are just like calling it this is what bothers me calling it grooming you know that they were, and Poison did this, and Bon, not Bon Jovi probably as much, but like, and not, definitely not Striper, but Striper probably has some hidden things in the closet they were bid, that were worse, who knows, but, you know, being Christian at all. <laughs> so, you know, every band did this. Rolling Stones probably did this, and Brody's, oh, that girl looks hot for Mick, you know, you know, whatever. It's a part of the rock and roll tradition. And, I don't like the artificial way. I would never do this. I would never allow my band or bands that I'm in to necessarily like have roadies, like choose girls to have sex with. I would just like say, hey, <laughs> like Man of War on stage is like, <laughs> it's just like point in the whole crowd. And if a girl wants to come up, they can't, or backstage they can or they can't, or they don't, they have, they can definitely deny it. If they don't want to do anything, that's their choice. I don't like this, like, systematic way of doing it but at the same time who's to say 
this is so problematic. It's, it's kind of sleazy, whatever. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about this. If there is more proof, then I'm willing to listen to it. Um, I think it's gone out of control, off, off the fucking rails with some of the stuff that people are saying now about some of the stuff that's just like, oh my God. Anyways, I'm going to try to get to sleep. Um, I had a little too much caffeine later at night and, you know, it's almost the weekend and I'm nervous about my, my own band's show. But anyways, that's about all.